What is up, everybody? I am here. here we, go. we got it. We got Zez in the house. We got some early early birds checking in in the chat. How's everybody doing today? How you doing, Zez? Doing well. Yeah, it's good wait, to I see can you. He oh wait, hold on. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let me just. I started to hear you back through the old, but uh, I had the YouTube video open. And I'm like, why is Steve coming at me from two angles? No, I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, doing well. I was, I was just, as I say, I'll tell everyone, I told you, Steve, uh, I got three words to describe my day. It's fucking snowing. Again, <laughs> again, it's snowing. We had a real nice day. I was able to film that video uh, yesterday, my tour video uh, of my storage room because it was a bit cold, but it was still sunny, nice to be outside. And then today it's snowing again. I had to go out, but I've mostly been inside. So doing all right. I spent the afternoon. Yeah. I spent the afternoon playing uh, shmups uh, on my nice stick. I can show you my stick later. Awesome. Uh, I've pimped out a nice stick with the uh now it's the inside it's running a, a raspberry p pico and it's running the gp 2040 ce project so it's like you can build your own fight stick it's really great uh does different systems so i was spent i was like oh, i can't be screwed this afternoon so i just spent a couple of hours playing games when was the last time you did that steve yeah you know i i haven't been playing games i've been like i've got i've got something really weird i've fallen into a rabbit hole which i'll get into uh first guys <laughs> yeah, thanks for joining us. Uh, Zez and I, we've been trying to get together this week for a stream, and it's just been so crazy. And uh, thankfully, it's Friday now, but we are able to get together. So thank you all for coming. There's not a huge thing of uh, agenda here. We're going to just shout off some things we've got going on in retro. I'm going to tell you how to, I'm going to tell you and Zez how to develop the most deadly calluses in the world <laughs> and this is a secret technique that's been handed down uh since the beginning of time because it's very natural but it's very secret and it's very it's very um uh embarrassing to talk about so it's not something a lot of people will dis disclose and maybe i'm the only one who does it anymore <laughs> more okay. because so i'll leave you on that cliffhanger so You're everybody fine. thanks for showing up Drop a like for us. Uh, I see a lot of people in the chat. Thank you all for coming in. Uh, a lot of the Rob usual Cat people. Yeah. Doing their race. Race. Master doing Safer. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. So, hey, Plum Nebula. Shit, monkey. Welcome. <laughs> Hello. Bakuka, Bakuka Mods. Welcome to your first stream. Yeah. So, anyway, um, I can't even remember where we were going here. But uh, let's start off with this snow in April thing. I, that is, that's hilarious. I actually had to get out and cut my freaking lawn, cut the grass with a lawnmower uh, last like weekend. Around. Yeah. Pushing for the, the lawnmower first, around. Okay, for the first yeah. time this year since it's been uh, winter and now spring t officially. So I had to do that, but it's been like trash weather since then. Here, yeah, there you was got, even is your some mower snow. run on gas or is electricity? What is no, it's on is it? it's on gas. It's running on. It's it, I tell you what, it's living on. It, it's it's more like living on a prayer, like Bon Jovi, the damn thing. <laughs> it's like I've got you know I've got it basically shoestrings tying it, holding it together because I'm so cheap, yeah. and I just keep them running as long as I can. Like I've hit rocks. And there's a blade under there and you hit a rock and the blade like does this or what time the blade did this right and i'm like why is this so hard to push and i look <laughs> i look down i hit a rock and it bent the blade down and the blade's cutting into the gra ground so i like have these plowing big, yeah so now I have these Plow big plow thing. marks and i'm like well that so i had to get under there bang it back out bang with a hammer. your mower does it start with a push button or you got to do the no you got and then and to get it Real really to, it's so old to get it really to start it's got yeah. like a carburetor on it that gets cum gummed yeah, up you gotta you yeah. gotta take a, a pin hammer and you gotta bang on the carburetor to break all the crap free and then you're like <laughs> This is classic. It, well, you would have such experience from driving that old fucking car of yours. Oh, well, so, so of course. <laughs> so that's exactly. I mean, I can't handle the new stuff. So the <laughs> yeah. So that's like since then we haven't had snow, but that sucks to have. I, I hated. Uh, yeah, I would hate to have to have snow again. Sorry. It's all right. It is what it is. It's okay. We're, my girlfriend and I Let's tomorrow we're going up. to we're going to a nice spa weekend tomorrow. It's going to be nice. Should be or should be ten degrees already tomorrow in the in the in the 
communism celsius <laughs> whatever we have over here so i don't know what your freedom the fahrenheit's are but we're gonna have like 10 we're gonna be way, way above zero tomorrow it should be some sunshine so i'm looking forward to it so we've got Excellent. some plum nebulas in the chat uh he's making a pvm hole that's real nice okay oh jake, nice jake nice to see you thank you for your compliments yeah, on my video jake appreciate that buddy yeah yeah so lewis has actually come out of hibernation himself from winter from his cold <laughs> winter and he's yeah. he's back on the uh production so you can go over and check out two new videos in like the last has it been within a week uh yeah a little bit over a week i know awesome. i know we don't want to go too crazy but i just had the inspiration so that on the next step is uh yeah, it has it's an excellent description steve the hibernation so <laughs> the next video i've got is i've got all this footage from japan from like over right. a year ago and the footage is mostly of me going through a store tour. So I've actually got it pretty much laid out where I actually do. I've already done the introduction live. Like I was at the front of the store going, hey, I'm at this store, blah, 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 blah. It's going to be great. And then I walk around the store and I like that. And now I just have to add the voiceover to it. So I picked the first video. Uh, the store that I've got is on the outside of Osaka uh, in the, wait, wait, that's the south. Yes, the south. And it is possibly the best store in the world to buy Famicom disc systems. The Famicom, sure, you can get everywhere, but the disc system, this guy has rows and rows and shelves of consoles, twin Famicom, everything. Like, clearly, the manager loves the Famicom and loves the disc system. So... Uh, that tour, I've just got to, it might take, it's going to take me a bit more than a week, but that's the next one. I just have to sort of record that voiceover over the top. Right. Awesome. Love it. Getting it. Yeah, that's fun. I know. I, I, I was laughing. Um, talk, I had to go back to the, anyone who watched the tour that when we were together video here on my channel, got to see us, of course, go to the legendary LNS Cafe. <laughs> which was that single car cafe um up there hey belmont welcome in there he is so i went back there this morning my dad sent me a um a message asking hey do you want to go and i was like sure and uh we go in get get in there get to order breakfast everything's fine but um before i went i made sure i did my exercise and then I literally, DDP yoga. yeah, my DDP yoga, but DDP I, yoga. I, <laughs> I went and I, uh, took a shower of course, right after that and then left and went to the restaurant. But dude, when I went to the restaurant today, I came out smelling like I had been grilling fajitas for 12 hours. <laughs> Every bit of clothes I had on had to go in the washing machine. Yeah. I had to take a, another shower and wash myself even more than the first shower to get the stink off me. And like, it was even in my boxers and socks. I couldn't believe it. I was like, this is unreal. It's like, it's like the stink. And so, so just from going to this diet. Yeah. I don't know what the hell happened. I was like, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why it was so nasty, but it really like made me not want to go back. Man, we got some, <laughs> uh, yeah. So anyway, that's what, uh, that, that's what I was going on with. Um, what did you have at the diner? I, my ba my dad got the Scrapple, right? Because oh, he's yeah. keeping the Scrapple game he going. Yeah, okay. I just went with some yeah. eggs and bacon this morning. Pretty simple. Nothing Nothing too... Uh, I'm glad. I'm really glad Belmont's here now because we could talk about the hands, the man hands. <laughs> Welcome to the weirdest, the weirdest <laughs> bunko... Well bunker named stream ever the man i want to know where we're going i have no idea well i and the only reason i, I bring it up I wrong i want to know where we're going with it belmont's in concrete and i'll be honest with you nothing is nothing in the world is more um uh like destructive to your hands than working in concrete and i know belmont has to know this because there's chemical reactions actually going on cement one of the key ingredients to concrete when you add water to the cement, there's actually a chemical reaction going on that's letting off temperatures, heat, all kinds of other things. And if that gets on your skin, it it'll start burning your skin literally. Like it's bad juju. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It, so it, what, it do you, what do you do? If you, you wear gloves or something, or what? You work with yeah. Gloves? Yeah. Well, I mean, like, I don't know what. It, like, 
there's always that like you of course you have to wear gloves in that most of the time in that industry and the reason i found that out was because i went and i used to i have a degree in concrete which we've talked about oh that's right back in the day right? way back that's in the day the, yeah, 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 okay. but anyway so you know i get my hands all messed up and i'd be meeting these guys and they would be like yeah hands are just tore to shit right you'd look at that's always the thing right they'd be like let me see your hands right Wait, what, what guys are you meeting? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Have you never of- has a... All right, this is probably more of a generational thing. This is more of a generational thing where... Um, and more of a working class thing. I know this sounds crazy, or, but I think it's probably more of that. You get somebody who's young and, and the guys who've been working in the crew out in the field for a while always give the new guys shit if they look at their hands and they have nice, soft, pretty hands, right? You don't have any calluses on there. Um, you have nice, moisturized hands and you don't look like, right, the first t- time you turn a wrench, you're going to uh, bruise your palm or something. So that's... That's that was always like, oh, let's see your hands, or you hey, shake your hands. And some of these guys, you'd be shaking hands. It felt like you were, you know, grabbing like a, a sandpaper, right? And you're like, <sighs> yeah, right. what's that guy? What's that character from the Fantastic Four? Who's the Rock? It'd be like yes, that. yeah, uh, the Rock guy. What's Ben? His name's Ben. I don't know the rest ben. of it. I don't know the rest either. Okay, so Steve, so this is right. excellent knowledge, but right. Why does it relate to Steve Nutter today? Well, because now it's it's like a lesser scale, right? So even working in CRTs, um, you're constantly in these old devices. It drives my hands out just working and stuff like this. Working with your hands a lot, you tear them up. You got to get your hands in small circuit boards, pulling things. Get your hand Any type of work with your hands, you're wearing your fingers out if you're doing it a lot. And so I still do a lot of wear and tear on my fingers and my hands, right? And the worst is during the winter time. The thing. Thank you, guys in the chat. So the worst is during the winter time. I can't believe I'm about to say this stuff. This is just terribly disgusting. Um <laughs> so in the winter time, you know, it gets even worse, right? You get the loss. What's up, Marco? You get the <laughs> loss is. in uh the loss in humidity, loss in temperature, you're washing your hands a lot, and if you don't always put moisturizer on them, they'll easily start cracking. I don't know about, like, mine will get cracked. Like, my cuticles will crack. I'll get big splinters, that, like, where the skin just celebrate, separates, and it gets real painful, and then it takes a while for those to harden up. So I went back, and I don't know what inspired this, but... um. The solution to all this popped into my head, and it was from a legendary baseball player <clears throat> named Moises Alou. All right, and that's see this. This is the Montreal Expos. It's a it's a throwback hat. But Moises, I'm now googling Moises. Let's, Alou. I'm going to pull up a picture of him too. Okay, Moises okay. Alou. Okay, he was a baseball player who played some of his time in the Mets, the New York Mets, but also some of his time with the Cubs and the Expos, I remember. And um, I'll never forget one spring training, which would be about this time. See, Montreal Expos. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's, let's look at this Wikipedia. I'm going to put this over Zez's face so everybody can see it for yeah, a second. Yeah, dude, I- so Moises Salou, there we go. Okay, Moises Salou, yeah. he's uh, anyway just a baseball player, really good hitter. But right. the thing Moises Salou did was he he always batted barehanded, like wood bats, barehanded, badass, right? Like most of these guys had gloves on, and like you start to think this guy has to have the toughest, roughest hands if he's hitting. Seventeen seasons, he hit for you know he was a hitter, so. Anyway, they, they interviewed him one spring training. And I'm sitting there just watching it on like Sports Center doing my stupid high school job, making sandwiches at the deli. And uh, they say, Mo- Mo- Moises, wh- you're like one of two baseball players in all of Major League Baseball that still uses no gloves on your batting hands. What's the secret to keeping your hands so tough? 
And he said, oh, yeah, well, that's easy. All spring training and up leading up to spring training, the secret is... The secret is you pee on them. <laughs> and he does, this reporter was floored. He says, what? He says, yeah, you pee on your hands in the shower, and that's a secret to keeping great calluses. <laughs> and I heard that, and it just made me laugh. And I, so I would always tell people, oh, man, like people want to come up and maybe talk sports to me because I was a guy working at a sub shop. And I would just laugh, and I would say, uh, it's like, oh, man, what you this baseball be on? And I'd be like, yeah, man, my favorite's Moises Salou. And I'm like, yeah, did you hear about how he spring trains and Talk about, I'd always bring up the situation where he pees on his hands. <laughs> so I was like, wait a second. I'm like, I, I heard him talk about it and I started looking and it, it's like, okay, peeing on your hands, right? How would you effectively do that without like, I don't know. And I was like, oh, in the shower, right? <laughs> Uh, pardon, pardon the pun here, but was he taking the piss? Taking the oh yeah, okay. yes, yes. All no, right, it's not yeah. like it's not like you got to get this. You got to get this. I was like, oh. You got to get this Egyptian tiger's piss, man. It's the best. <laughs> it's like eight thousand dollars an ounce. But once you rub that on your skin, it turns it into hard leather, and you can hit the ball an extra eight feet. <laughs> <laughs> so he creates this whole thing around him so he's like yeah yeah so then the and i was like yeah. and i mean the funny thing is is he english was his second language so okay. it was a little broken up a lot of people didn't understand it it was the 90s they didn't mm. they just a lot of it was brushed off but i never forgot about it so anyway yeah like uh about uh Three months ago, I started the Moises Alou spring training uh, in in the shower, and what, I'm here. What to, I'm here to. It? I was tired of getting calluses. I knew the winter was coming, and sure, winter was coming, and I was like, yeah, okay. the worst thing again is when you get in here and you get into your cuticle area and that just will split and you'll get these little splits in your hand and and then it, it, it gets a little wound in there and it just always yep. splits and hurts you get a little hair in there and i hope i haven't scared off the entire chat <laughs> i'm not going to start what? peeing here on the stream <laughs> it's only fans for but i have been drinking a lot of water yeah, well so you got to you know one thing leads to another that's all i'm saying okay so you've decided Today is the day I'm going to get into the shower. Moises Alou style, number one. Yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of what I did. And I was like, well, what's the official method? And uh, so, yeah, I just was like, all right, well, let's just let it go. And just get on your hands, fingertips, rub it around in the shower, like out here, away from the water for a minute. Oh, and just... <laughs> yeah. and you get it in there nice and good and then you just go back and then you you shower and wash your hands obviously wash yourself so you clean everything off and i can't believe it i haven't had like a single one of those splits in my finger and uh mm. it's like the salt and enzymes i guess in there probably just clean it like and then it, so it, it's it's natural it's weird and i'm here to tell you ladies and gentlemen this is the Steve Nutter method. This is I'm, it, I'm picking it up, baby. Moises Salou retired about 10 years ago. I think he might be in the Hall of Fame of baseball. And to get in the Hall of Fame of CRTs, you got to... <laughs> you got to have you're the in tough the Hall hands. Hall of Fame of CRTs. No, so I'm still your working. Hands these day, your, hands, your hands these days, they're feeling better. We're not get as many cracks. Uh, you know, you got to do a little gymnastics in the shower, maybe, because you got to bend and stretch, bend down. You know, Bend down. <laughs> kind of. I, I'm, what? He pointed upwards. What do you, you do? Just, like, you just do, you, do it, man. Like just a fountain. Yeah. Just let it go towards oh. the drain. True. So is it is it worse? <laughs> okay. I, I could take this to a new level. <laughs> so let's say you want to do this technique, right? Fine. Right. Okay. You don't Besides have to. This, no, no. This is it. You don't have this to. Is but for let's everybody. Say this is, a is it better or worse 
if you got like a cup and then you're into oh, the cup. God, first, man, this is really then... getting gross now. <laughs> like dip it's and... the same. I, it seems ickier, but you're like, it's the same, right? You're going to go one. Why would it be? <laughs> I don't know, right, man? Yeah. Beautiful. I'm just telling you, there's something to it. I didn't make it up. <laughs> so um, it's obviously cheaper, too, than moisturizer. Oh. I don't know, man. How long? You know, Jake asks, I, every time I get in the shower, it feels like I have to go. Okay, just because I die water, water and it's like yeah it's like it's already like oh I gotta go. after I got 40 I have to go to the bathroom like every hour it's not yes, that hard me too uh, all the time it's I'm like like it's not like when I was a kid where I'd be like oh yeah man let's hold it eight hours <laughs> so, so anyway. this is the secret now we're repairing CRT boards we're repairing a lot of things yeah now you can get in there you scratch your hands day. up and it's like oh well i just pee on them and then they're like it's like oh, a miracle so i Steve having three showers a day i think you might like the process as well I uh, well <laughs> yeah i haven't got my water bill this month but it's definitely going to go up <laughs> yeah so like that's it that's the big secret okay that's so, it. We Steve's can move on from that. There sure, you, you can have a whole. Well, maybe. I, I want to. I just want to know, ladies and gentlemen. I have no more information about this than <laughs> you do. I am not in on this. Look, I'll give it a try. Maybe uh, could be some. <laughs> yeah. If you want to, yeah. What I about get pissing still on your cleanliness, board? right? Now it probably that it might that might that might short something. Yeah. So back to sure. CRTs for a second. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah what have you okay going back to crts what have you been working on oh this yeah week? yeah this was a funny story right so um i've been uh, for those of you who don't know and actually i don't think we've even talked about this list like it happened so quickly uh i bought this or i'm under contract right now to close for a new house right and um not new but i mean a new place for us new and to you yeah. it came available it was a place that was like whoa you know not like we've been waiting and um this was the right spot so it happened really quickly and uh since i've been doing that i've been like busting my butt working on crts in here because i've got a ton of them in the shop um so one of the ones i got done was the one i just finished the video on was the jvc the huge d series the, the 32 the one that was in your garage right that one right yeah one of the yep. big three mm -hmm. and i got it all finished and i'm talking to the guy who owns it and he's like he's sends always hires somebody to come drop it off and now pick it up and he's like, I got a, I got somebody there coming Wednesday. They'll be there to get it. I'm like, good, because I need it out. You know, it's so big. I, anytime I get a big one done, I want it out. Right, if I can. Sure. So the guy, he calls. And bless him, man. He's like, well, man, what's up, dude? <laughs> this, this is like, oh, uh, Aaron, right? And kind of. And I mean, I'm not trying to make fun of the guy, but he definitely sounds like Jesse Pinkman from uh, Breaking Bad, right? <laughs> right over the phone. I'm just laughing. And he's like, yeah, so like I'm driving to pick up this car or this. Uh, I'm driving my car down to pick up this TV, right? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, it's a big TV. And he's like, what? I'm like, yeah, like it's a pretty big TV. How big? What kind of car are you driving? Oh, a Chevy Impala. And I'm like, <laughs> this is like a mid-sized car. And I'm like, well, <laughs> he's like, I'm 15 minutes away. I'm like, well, you already drove four hours. So you might as well come and see if it fits or not. I don't know. Uh, so, yes, yeah, shows up just like I said, just like a Jesse Pinkman type. Hilarious. And uh, he pulls in. And I mean, like, there's we open the back door. And I like slide this 32 inch CRT in the back. And, like it fits in the back seat. Is it like a sedan, is it? Yeah, and like, I yeah. mean, barely. The problem is the doors don't usually open wide enough, so you can't get through that door no. clearance. This fit like a quarter inch. Pushed it in, yeah. got it in there in the seat, and I was like, I don't know how you're getting that out, but somebody's going to have to help you. He's like, yeah, man. He's like, what's going on here, man? What? Why do people do this, man? What is this stuff? And I'm just like, yeah, I kind of like the, one of the only guys in the whole country that you can go to for this. And he's like, what? why do people do it? 
Why? It doesn't make sense. It's got to cost money. And I'm like, dude, it's hobbies. Of course it costs money. Every hobby. It's like, you ever met a golfer? They're going to go out <laughs> and spend $10,000 a year being miserable in nature. So, yeah, God, that was... Young, yeah, so he, oh, thank, no, thank God yeah, he got out. Off. And I was like, yeah, man, when you go out the driveway, be careful. Your car's going to bottom out. You're going to scrape. So just yeah. take it slow. And of course... And he's like, takes off. I'm like, yes. Out of my, <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. I don't know what happens from this point. At least, but it was the, at least this job, he's like delivering something legal for once. It sounds like he's a runner. <laughs> and usually. Hey, I don't want to jump to any conclusions. Trunk, yeah. But I don't know. It wouldn't have been smart. But uh, hey, there was um, literally two miles from where I'm living right now on the interstate. There was, there was a uh, somebody was driving through with 130 pounds of marijuana in a minivan and this person was speeding and tailgating and goes past the cop gets pulled over again two miles from my house on the uh -huh. interstate gets pulled over and then when the cop asks if he could search the car he consents says yes I'm like, this is, I'm reading this report. I'm like, this is the dumbest. Who are these dumb criminals? I'm like, I just can't even believe how dumb that is. You're speeding, you're tailgating. Then you say, sure, officer, have a look through. Why not? Hey, yeah, do you want to, do you want to share some? <laughs> yeah, you, like, oh my God. Sorry. Wait, wait, that's not cool here, man. <laughs> wait that's not cool oh, God. Uh, yeah that's a lot i mean don't, yeah it, it's easy you're gonna do something bad don't like speed don't like get oh my god I, I i just don't understand i have no idea how like that's more marijuana in this small small town like unless there's mm. unless there's some of those mennonites growing like 50 pounds hidden on the pig farm <laughs> where over in the Dayton area there's not that much there's not that much uh, marijuana right, right here. Yeah. yeah, okay. There's not enough. Unless the Mennonites are getting on themselves. Yeah. But, okay. Hey, it's nature. Maybe, who knows? You know, it's nature. It's natural. Maybe they could be into it. I'm not really sure how they're, what the rules of their their uh, culture say. So so maybe. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Hey, I got, I, I'm, I, we're getting some feedback. Some people are yeah, saying Rob. Yeah, let's go Rob. to the stream. Let's go to Rob's the stream. loving his stream. Loving it. Love the little pee talk, don't you, Rob? Yeah, yeah that's what everybody All of a sudden, right. Go to pee and you're right into it. You dirty man. Uh, <laughs> Basil's there. Hey, that ain't Marco. flux residue. <laughs> we did. We did it, uh, Doctor Mark. So Marco's got. So uh, if you haven't checked out Marco's videos, you gotta go. Go to his oh, channel. Yeah. Uh, he is doing a whole series on exploring different devices that will downscale to 240p. So he's like basically finding every device every setup every weird extron every weird downscaler that he can find secondhand and he's making a video on how does it go to downscale to either 480p 480i sorry or to 240p and he's doing these tests to work out with well, some like some do the uh and he's very good at this as well so like he'll show you if it is uh doing the scan lines correctly or if it's moving it between scan lines and the way it, and um or if it's got some lag and so he's doing he's doing excellent videos and that channel should really grow so go check out marco uh if if we're gonna find the great downscaler marco i think is gonna find it like if you just want to go buy a retro tink and spend you know whatever the three four hundred on the that's fine that would be your solution if you want to downscale like legit to 480i to 240p but if if we're gonna find the left field solution the other weird device marco is the one who's gonna find it for us yeah it's been fun i mean it's way more like it's so some of those things are so hard to get your hands on some of the devices he's been running through on his channel it's been really yeah. cool to see it's like ones you always wanted to know what they did it's like the emotia stuff extrons those things are ghosts and uh so a lot of cool stuff um yeah, so let's see what else. 
Yeah. And I, I also, so, uh, yeah, I appreciate everyone uh, getting into to my video. A few people here have been saying that. So I've already found, uh, this is a funny story that just came out today. I've already found one dude that I know who's actually in Stockholm. So not so far from me, just over the water from Estonia. He wants to buy one of those monitors. So he saw it on the video. So this ended up as like a, basically what, what like a, an auction stream, I guess. So he wanted to buy one of those uh, five inch, the real small ones. I've got three of them in a rack. Uh, okay. And he's like, "Hey, man, can I pick it up from you? Uh, can I? Can you send it over?" So, uh, yeah, maybe I should have been more uh, open about that. Like, actually, I would sell that stuff. I think so. A lot of it, I don't know, or like a lot of the uh, 14-inch BVMs. I think most of them, I'd rip the cards out, and I'd been trying all the different cards. Some of them had had issues here and there, so I'd have to pull a few of them together. Um, but yeah, I would totally be open to selling that. It's just like. They're, because we don't have you ship here in Europe, so there's no, you know, easy way to ship it to. Like, I, I, I and I, because uh, for example, I would um, absolutely for free send a 19 inch BVM to uh, Web HDX, who's in Poland, the guy who's oh, making yeah. all those great GameCube mods, and he just came out uh, with the broadband adapter emulator, so like a homebrew solution right. for about 30 bucks. And you can create the broadband adapter, which was the network plug for the GameCube. And that allows you to play the uh, network games. And then you can tunnel it over the VPN and play with your buddies who are in other places. And I use my broadband. I use I have the real one. And I use it to stream the game straight off uh, Retro NAS. Um, so that's it's not exactly perfect, but it works well enough. So WebHDX is doing amazing stuff. I know he's got a, a WaveBird receiver uh project like he he has that made i think that he, when i was talking to him the only difficulty was well he's got a bunch of stuff he's got so many projects that he's trying to get out for the gamecube the m2 loader that's out now the broadband adapter i know he wants to get to the the gamecube the receiver the wavebird receiver um i think he had at some time had some problems uh the the wavebird receiver it's uh wireless and it's quite specific wireless there's a reason why nobody has cloned the WaveBird receiver, even though clearly that is something a lot of people would like. And I think he found a very specific chip that would do it, was having problems sourcing it, he was trying to get them in. So yeah, that dude's legit, he's awesome, and I would happily send him one, but I don't even know. Let's see, if I can if I can work out a good way to ship this one to Stockholm, which isn't hard, then maybe I'll learn that, like if I learn DHL and how much it costs, and I haven't even done that shit, right? I'm gonna have to DHL this monitor to Stockholm. I might send one to Web HDX as well. Yeah, it's those things. It's been such a pain. Actually, I had uh, Jake was asking from the chat about it because he had, uh, I had a PVM that was one that <clears throat> had been fully restored in the stream that he bought that we've been waiting for like ten days for you ship to respond, mm. and I haven't gotten any. Um, just unfortunately, I haven't gotten anything on that one. I had. Another, I haven't got anything yet on yours, but don't worry, we'll figure that out next week. We'll either relist it or that one's in good enough shape. I've got a couple boxes in their 13 inch, and I can actually get that one shipped um, through FedEx, and it it will be hard for them to break it, right? If I pack it yeah. like crazy enough, it's just it's, it's it sucks because it's still right. It's there's still always a risk if they like run over it with a truck, but <laughs> that uh, anyway. I hate yeah. to do no. it because it also then I have to pack it and it takes time and it's just like a pain. But if I have two right now, I had another one that's supposed to be going out and it's been delayed because drivers are getting tore up here in the United States up in Michigan. There's been like you, they're getting snow. Mm, so okay. they're throwing off some of these drivers going that direction. When stuff goes west, it's hard to find drivers stuff going east and north and south and the east coast is easy i get quick response and cheap rides but going that west it's it's like the price goes up it's harder to find drivers i want out there a lot it's all of about, times like if someone's going right you know like if that's a a commonly plowed route then, yeah okay you can find some but if no one's going well, it's such. It's like they're like I'll, I'll, or they've got to be going on a route that way certain times and and a lot of the guys are just going up and down the east coast it's like kind of a pain but Either way, we yeah, we'll figure something out. It's not. It's definitely on my list of 
my big board here. <laughs> Go into uh, the chat for a moment. A few things here. What have got? So Bakuku mods. Why do you think the the Wiki Fusion is the the best for the GameCube? I don't know. I I only have installed Xenomod, and then I use the SP two SD uh, to boot. Um, I think yeah, you could get the Swiss on the SP two wait SD two SP whatever it is. You know what I mean? That one, uh, and then pull Swiss off that. How come? Like what what what's different about the Wiki? And then Chris Broom was saying that in the video uh, that I posted, he saw that I have a Dreamcast Mad Cats controller. And he thinks it's the only good controller. I've never tried it. Uh, the only reason I have it is my buddy <laughs> uh, here in Estonia, uh, my buddy came and said, hey, man, I got something for you. I got something for you. And he gave me that controller. I guess he didn't really want it. And I said, sure, buddy, I'll take it. I'll put it in the collection. Uh, well, I usually something I would get. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go. No, you can talk. I've, I've actually got two items that have come in the mail this week that are cool. I'll, sh I'll show them off here. They're okay, good little talks. Yeah, well, one's right here. Right. So, uh, Bakuku saying the, uh, the it sits between the disk drive and the motherboard. True. Isn't that what the flippy drive is going to do as well? I think that's getting close. I think it's still... Uh, which all, that would The flippy drive would be sort of like that open source version, but I know he's got to make the... Uh, uh, I know he's got the... Um, uh, the ribbon the ribbon's gonna go in between so how how does it compare to that you can play games directly from the sd injected to the drive and this still work so yeah i mean the xeno is pretty rough the xeno is about as nasty and but cheap but nasty as mod chips get it works but it is you get the stuff steve what do you i got? got it i got it first get off it got some real cool stuff here this is something i saw and i absolutely just like got enamored with and fell in love with i wanted to have something cool at the new place where i guarantee you it's a it's a house that was built in the 90s so it's going to have coax cable run throughout the bedrooms <clears throat> Now, so, wait, coax? You mean coax TV or cable. network? Yes, TV coax cabling. Do, is that a normal okay. thing in Europe? To have that uh, through the no, wall? No, so you mean, so you, mean you could have ca like old cable TV that yes. you could have that in your bedroom. Okay. That, okay. And, and that is like any house that was built older, unless you, I mean, most of them still even have it. Uh, you'll have a sure. coax outlet on the wall, right? Well, Australia would have it, but we didn't have cable TV in Australia. Okay. That, that we never because Australia was too friggin huge or we got it too late uh, so they never like did the job of laying all the cable for cable TV so the first time we got would you call it pay TV like not free to air was around the year I want to say 1997 Marco can help me out with this one as well it was around 98 99 I remember 2000 wow. uh, we had satellite and the satellite receiver and I remember for the first time because that's when uh, I, I remember because it was the year 2000. Me and my buddies had a share house. Uh, we got the satellite TV because he was a crazy AV nerd. My friend Gay J, Gay J and I, we had the that. And that was when it was the year 2000. The Sydney Olympics were happening. We wanted no part of the Sydney Olympics. <laughs> and there was a, Fox, a channel on Fox that for two weeks played the Simpsons straight. And that was back. That would have been like the ninth year that in fear of the simpsons or what if something like this yeah so it was the golden age of the simpsons and for two weeks me and gay j just sat there and watched simpsons for two weeks so we got that absorbed so however it would be normal in australia to have just your rf coming out in different. Yeah. so the lounge the, the lounge room would have one or two and then probably the master bedroom would also possibly have an rf but that's just from the antenna for the free to wear Right. So is that a similar so, idea? But yeah, yeah. People? So here's what so here's what it used to do, right? And this is how it would work. Um, the signal from it would it still use today through the cable company still use those coax lines. So the cable comes in to the house to the front of the property. There's cable usually right under your power lines if you have power lines out front, and then there's literally a coax hookup up there from your house or from the lines to your house and it goes into your house usually into like a uh junction box or some kind of conduit pole thing that goes up into your roof into your like attic generally and then yeah. that'll go into a hub 
that signal goes into a hub and that hub is generally a splitter with amplifiers out and that splitter with amplifiers will then go wired off all throughout the house and it doesn't matter all this can just literally it's so goofy it doesn't matter whether it's a splitter or combiner there it's so like little in it it can go it's you it's not unidirectional it's both directional so you can literally send and receive data up these lines both ways so there's no like you have to have a certain thing set up anyway all those lines then get tied out to each room and then like you could have every bedroom and a kitchen and a, all these weird people doing stuff with the cable back in the day. Um, and so you could at, you could still get your cable disconnected from the company, go up in your attic, disconnect the one that went out the street and put that to an antenna and then you still then you get full antenna to the whole house, right? So you could do that, you could still do that. But the other thing you can do is there's not any use for the old non high definition channels, right? There's nothing on them anymore. It's all the high definition broadcasts. So those standard definition channels, you can make your own networks at your house and you can use those channels if you have devices that will output on that channel. So what I got was long story, right? I got one of these devices, which is a uh it's called a channel plus video okay. distribution system it's oh. so it's a 90s channel extron system. looking device yeah. this is the one output side this is the input side and then it's got some of course extron style directions on oh, here okay so we can run composite in one yes. side so okay. what what you could do here is not just that this is a specific one that has dual composite so this yeah. is awesome. It's got dual two composite, two channels. So you could program this for two channels simultaneously to be pumped out of this. And what it does is you program it by pressing the buttons and uh, you can program it to do two channels, anything between 14 to 64, the numbers on the UHF, or you can okay. do cable. If you could do cable, then if you want to, between 65 to 125 up, if you can receive that. And they're all standard definition. So, again, you're putting composite into each one of these. And then on the output, you have an amplified signal come out of these three. And then you have a local in and a local out unamplified. And then you have an antenna in. So what you can do, this is all nuts, right? This is all nuts. But... I want to get what I've been doing is I've been backing up my uh, media mm -hmm. by burning or backing up DVDs of shows, movies, and saving them, converting them over to MP4s eventually is sure. what they do. Yep. You convert them to MP4s and then you save them in a file and then you program a Raspberry Pi to just run the VLC player. Sorry, I should okay, probably yeah. switch over to both of us again. So you run you run VLC, you get it to run auto, you tell it to run four by three out and it runs and then you just hook up composite video to this and it literally just spits out your programming in the file plays and plays and plays however much media you have so you set up each one of those with a different type of a channel yeah. right from an a pie <laughs> you set up a pie you put an sd card with the files on it and then you just run that straight into one of these run another one into this and i and look at this i can even use see so i can use this but i can also use this which is just a regular channel three four uh demo or modulator just kind of yeah, like, yeah. also like the reflex, RF reflex. But I can use this. I could ch choose this to go to channel four. And then I can run the output on this, channel four. Yep, yep, yep. Into the into amplifier. The... And then I get, I get three channels coming out of this into the wall system. And I can keep <laughs> cycling those together. I get like five of these boxes. They're about 50 bucks on eBay. They were until I talked about them. I can so. get these boxes and I can like you can keep sequencing them up and you mm. you have to leave like one blank channel between each channel so they interfere okay, yeah. and then some you have to leave two blanks like the, the UHF but you could mm. do that and you could make like 30 channels and run them through the house and I was like how freaking awesome is that now you're gonna have a wall with a hundred power supplies and like all this goofy stuff.
like coming in but but i was like this is is so much fun and i was like this is awesome i'm like you could just turn on it'll come out the wall and you just turn on a a, a, um a crt and and i would i went out to the bar and i was telling my like lamo friends about like my my lamo but my normie friends about this at the (laughs) bar they're like what are you up to and they always like to laugh because they're like like one guy's a, a uh like a hospitalist the other guy is like a uh, um he's an engineer like mathematician for a pharmaceutical company and we're out having mm-hmm. beers and they're always like steve you live in the dream you know doing this stuff and i'm like yeah so my latest project <laughs> is i just picked up this demodulator and i'm ready to start running signals through it and i'm going to set up this cable you know what i'm talking about and they're like we don't know what, the, what the fuck is a demodulator <laughs> <laughs> like no, Steve. <laughs> and so then I'm like, all right, let me break it down. It's like the 30 minutes of telling this stuff. Like, oh, that's all right. It's okay. And I'm like, well, I'm like, it would be really cool if you had like a a vacation house or not a vacation house, like a rental Airbnb. And that's what you had set up was like old TVs with just this local programming on it on the TVs. Like you turn yeah. on the TV for your like your Airbnb or your and that's rental all property. They guess. Can watch. And that's it. That's like, imagine it. Like, the reviews. <laughs> <laughs> you get internet. But yeah, that's yeah. the only thing on the TVs is old TVs with old uh signals on it. With just Steve T V going twenty four seven. Just you yes. just old reruns of this stream over Oh that's and over it. Again. I could also yeah I could put yeah. well, I'm gonna have one channel that's just gonna be the Cathode Ray podcast, you know? And it will literally be <laughs> two weeks without having to watch something new and we'll just put everything on there and then and then my, like i'll try to sell it to my neighbors maybe i'll be like hey you Show want steve programming then, yeah. you know it's i got some Netflix, people like steve just Netflix, hey just yeah so i was thinking that um the other cool thing is, is since i still have that uh that tv that i have that's the plasma screen from 2000 very uh, nice tv seven it accepts both digital and standard through the antenna and i still use antenna for high def so i can run the high def and get all the regular channels through the amplifier again and so i can get all those channels that come through the antenna over the air as well as my own steve channel so i will have like my own cable that will be better than i'll be like one of the kids be like want to watch something i like uh, just don't turn it to the one channel that does show boobs yeah, your kids are gonna love it. Wow, I just can only imagine how much your children. Will like, love. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. They'll like, just have it. Like, I'll have a Simpsons channel like that for them. Sure, playing Simpsons. Not- okay, that's kind of cool. Like, you yeah, can see the Simpsons all nonstop. Or they're like, why can't I choose? They're there with the remote, going, what? Why isn't a menu coming up where I can choose yeah. the episode? No, it's you like- just watch. What? I just watch whatever's on, huh? This just says, yeah. This just says volume. It- it's like whatever the remotes that come with the CRTs, volume yeah, up yeah, and yeah. down, channel up and down. So, so that's, that's what this. That's what this, that's what this is, is and that's what this. This yeah. is like so this is a you cool device. That? Like, no, I literally just got it in like yesterday. Um, Wait, from did you eBay. buy that just because you found you've got the cable in the new house? Well, no, like that's a normal thing. I, I mean, okay. for the cable. Then why to be did in the you house. buy this three? Why did you buy this in the last week then? So I could do this when I moved to the okay, new house. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. So, yes. And uh, and I was like, yeah. So I've already got that. I was like, oh, I've already got like a whole <laughs> network here. So the priorities. To... Yeah. This guy's about to move house. He's gonna pack everything up, change the whole life. But my priority is creating Steve TV distribution <laughs> in the new house. <laughs> like, I, like don't don't worry about the TV guys. I got it covered. Yeah, he's the most complex. Cute. Yeah, yeah. There's gonna be the there's gonna be like this this little corner in the house that's gonna be like a thousand degrees. I'm gonna put it in the center of the house so that during the winter time it just emits heat, yeah. and I'll have it like put a a ventilator through it because it's gonna have all those devices and power supplies in there, and then I'll put like you know I'm gonna run I'm gonna run 250 outlets of uh, Cat Six for for ethernet because i don't like to use the wi-fi so it doesn't mess with my brain signals man i need my tinfoil hat you know well that's what i was about <laughs> before you before you started to tell me all about the uh we went down this literal rabbit hole of coaxial i was about oh might that make it easier you could easily replace that with cat six or or some sort of ethernet cable 
if you've got an outlet in every room because then you could just take off the plate uh, in the wall and like use it to pull like as you pull the coaxial out it would pull the network cable down and in one swoop you could get your cable down the wall and then i mean this would do away with your coaxial plan i appreciate that now i see that this is a flaw yeah. in my plan but that would be if you wanted to put the hub you know what i mean right but That's, i could do the a double part is like you could be true I mean, the hardest part is like how to it get through. i've done that though i know how to do that oh, yeah. oh, you okay, know with, you with like fishing things and those electrical lines yeah i've had to do that crap yeah, before you can do shit like that. it's a pain you're right but it can be i'd rather do that than rip it out i think true i mean no if it's possible yeah, i'd like to i know i just like i want i want to have both of them but i always wanted to have like again it's it's because I, it will be so much i think it would be awesome to have that set up like that for again since i have so many crts sure just to plug it in and it sounds i mean it's it's going to be an immense waste of time for somebody that i just probably put it on in my office while i'm working <laughs> what's on the tv arnold schwarzenegger channel that's why you should that's exactly why and that's going to be okay. it so i don't know that's why i'm going to kind of wait because i don't want to get too much gear yet this three channels is plenty for now yeah i think you're good yeah, yeah. so Still proof of concept for three that's channels, yeah we're gonna do a little concept to see how that goes and see if it's too much work because i found it like the most pain in the ass thing is burn it or get sit there messing with the dvds kind of just takes the time you know okay so next priorities as we move house and again steve has got his priorities in order so the next one is has there steve has there been a discussion in your family in the new house will you still have that big crt in the lounge room oh yeah my wife doesn't want to get rid of that piece of furniture funny enough she likes oh, the furniture the, 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 the wood, armor the cabinet yeah the cabinet that it's in has sentimental value so you're like hey baby CRT oh, goes with the cabinet. She does not care about the TV. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Okay. She's so cool about that stuff. She literally does not care. She'll. She's like whatever. So that. So your solution would be good at least for the lounge room TV. You don't exactly. need that Roku crap in there. Five dollar converters. We've gone on about that. You just need Steve TV playing there. Yeah, uh, that's true. I mean, I like. I could get. I could back up all of Friends. And then they will watch that because they would just watch that though over right, and over the and Friends over again. Channel, yeah. I mean, I'm sure if I had like a um, Modern Family Channel, my girl, you know, watch it 24 seven, right? She watches that. Yeah, it's like seven, whatever but, you're right. It's like get the whole season. And I actually found the place to go shh, to to find DVDs of all these shows and rent them for free and get them for a three weeks and then take them back what the, the library the, yes the local library has tons of <laughs> i like them. how you i've got a secret <laughs> got a, you want to know things. you want to know where to get the physical media man the library has it man the library dude you go down there and you don't tell them what you're doing but yeah i get like x files star trek all that stuff they have mm -hmm. every season on dvd down there and uh, so yeah that's the next step is like getting that, that all set good. up uh, and that would be that, better all that would be better on a plex system or whatever you know eventually too right, mm. um, right. a server so the, the the dvd is is an interesting option because this is the the dukes of hazard problem that i had and it's just because i was trying to find dukes of hazard right and then i was just trying <laughs> to explain dukes of hazard to my girlfriend who grew up you know like in eastern europe here and i'm like it doesn't ring, <laughs> but you know it's okay we can get behind it and uh uh that you so something like dukes of hazard was originally produced on four by three uh and that's how the original aspect ratio but then it was being re-released and it's available on hd formats on dvd and then well dvd is not hd fine um and so i what when i wanted to download it from pirate bay i wasn't sure whether i should be getting the four by three because that would be good for watching on the crt i could play it through let's say the playstation 3 use that as the media server do the composite out look would look beautiful in the bvm or do i download the more modern release which is actually i, I think a cropped wide screen uh that would be better for playing on the flat panel and i wasn't sure which one to download so i had to download two copies of the dukes of hazard one <laughs> you know one's, one's in four by three and one's in wide cropped wide but wide which would be better for the 
for the, the flat panel. So you have to well, right. I mean, that, like I would like, why wouldn't you download all of these episodes, Steve? But yeah. maybe you only find either the four by three or you find the 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 DVD might be the wide, depending, right? Depends. It might be wider, it might be four by three DVD. You know, you gotta watch that, right? So right. you know, yeah, so I've got a bunch of letterbox DVDs, but also they're widescreen DVDs, and that's what I was wondering. But see, I, I have it. That's what I've got to get in and see what actually happens when you force output, uh, because v, the VLC player lets you force output to four by three. So sure. I don't know okay. if it's going to then take. Well, I don't know what it's going to do. Right? What is? Because because like when I go and I get the mp it doesn't matter like when i rip a dvd it always gives it to me in um 1080i i believe or the whatever the it, it takes it from one format right and then you pick in this other program to change it down to i have to change it down to an mp4 and i usually go like 480p quality it's to try to make the space less and May, since maybe, it's only um, going to be on CRTs in this instance. Sure. So maybe someone in the chat can help out. So help me on my understanding here. Like clearly I know that a DVD produces a widescreen image, but are there DVDs that produce four by three? I'm pretty sure of that. I'm pretty sure I've seen that, but that was not only dependent on the technology, but whether just that release of the DVD is four by three or 16 by nine. Because what you would have, like, let's say I had go back to the Dukes of Hazard, and if you download Dukes of Hazard right now in sixteen by nine, I presume that's cropped, and that's how they're getting sixteen by nine. Because Dukes of Hazard, it's so old, it would have been shot. Yeah, in 4 oh, by I three. see what you're saying. Shot in four by three, so it's like the thing where they were complaining about Seinfeld, how they were cutting off, cutting off right bits so, that you miss because then it's actually just. You're just literally taking the four by three image and cutting it to sixteen by nine. So you are so make losing sixteen by nine, right? So you are losing. But then, right? Then if you took the sixteen by nine Dukes of Hazard and then tried to put it on four by three, it would chop it again. Yes. Or I mean, either a... compress it so you'd have bars, or chop it. So maybe searching for these, like, do a little <laughs> search online. You can find. Yeah. yeah. Uh, look, Dukes of Hazard is out there. I know it. Um, you know, like sometimes there are the original four by threes available on Pirate Bay. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. I don't. Uh, what's up, delusional? Yeah, I don't know that it, this is all new stuff, and so I wanted to kind of. That's why I was like, well, I'll just rip these things I have, and then when I finally get the test rig set up, then I, I I've got to now get the kind of work on the Raspberry Pi end. And sure. that won't take much, but I got to get that. And I want to see how it spits out, how it looks at the other end from the inverter. Maybe I can do that one time on a stream or something. At least okay. the testing. But Yeah. Okay. That's a cool. I mean, that's a cool, like, there's definitely, if nothing else, there's a good video in you trying to get this. Yeah. It would be silly. Going. So Casey, I got that. Casey in the chat says he's watching this on his CRT. Please tell us, Casey. <laughs> tell us about this. This sounds great. Uh, just going through the chat. Thyme says uh, he also believes that Dukes of Hazard is, is cropped from the 4x3 because it's so old. It would have uh, always been that. But Cuckoo has this plan where, like, he was saying that if you had Arnold Schwarzenegger channel, that, like, somehow you could set it so when there's a motion sensor and you walk into a room and something plays, which reminds me of another story <laughs> in the same share house with me and Jay, right? And we would do a lot of wacky stuff. We were kind of bored. It was before the internet was a big thing. So we had a lot of time to be bored. And I'm up late one night. So I rigged up. It wasn't a motion sensor. It was sort of like somehow I rigged it up so that it was like a small sensor. And it would like when the fridge opened, like it would trigger the fridge opening. And the first thing about this fridge, it was like a real old share house fridge. And the... Uh, what to say the clasp or the thing that like the magnet that keeps it closed right like it didn't close it in that wasn't working very well so we actually opened up an old hard disk and got the big strip of magnets out of a hard disk and then drilled one into the door one into the frame <laughs> and that made a great fucking seal and like sealed around it <laughs> made an awesome seal in this fridge and then i kind of worked out i had this little sensor that would be like a little trigger and um to so we like trigger and I'm like, what can I do with this? Like, what do I want to trigger when the fridge door opens? 
and I eventually decided we were listening to a lot of Adam S- Adam Sandler's original sketch comedy back then, and yeah. he's got an old sketch. Some of you guys might remember it called Toll Booth Willie, and <laughs> Toll Booth Willie is just this old guy that everyone abuses the hell out of him. He's trying to be nice. Everyone abuses the hell out of him. And he's final when he finally cracks his big line is, you're gonna die, bitch. I'm coming out of the booth. And I don't know, we would just play that shit over and over to each other. So I rigged up the fridge that when Jay, Jay's groggy, he works in construction. So he's opened the fridge at like 5 a.m. or 4 a.m. to get up for his job. He doesn't know, I've been to bed only a few hours earlier. He wakes up. And this fridge, the light pops on and goes, you're going to die, bitch. I'm coming out of the booth at him. And <laughs> poor guy lost his mind that morning. <laughs> We're in college. I had nothing else to do. Right. That's a good day. Good thing to do. I got one other, one other little item here that actually got? was sent here to me from Excellent. Blue Shell. Blue Shell on Twitter. Oh, Check yeah. it out. How cool is this thing? This is, I just looked at it. I just opened it. It looks like a high heel. Sexy oh. set of high heels for a PVM, <laughs> which is what it is. It's a reverse stand to lift. I'll show you. We're going to get an eight inch PVM here, but man, this is super high quality print of yeah. this. Uh, he contacted awesome. me said, yeah, he, he released this print design on, uh, for free on GitHub or something. Uh, but he said he had an extra one. I was like, heck yeah, man. I can't print this good. This is super, super nice. That's so super. so this is for, uh, this is for, uh, yeah, uh, let me show that. this. Yeah, get yeah, that. By the way, shout out to everyone in the chat who knows Tollbooth Willie's sketch. <laughs> Hell yeah. I don't like, again, before the internet, you don't know. I, you, like how d- d- what was it it was on even- cds and stuff back then right, wasn't CDs. it CDs. how do we I mean, even ever get that crap back then that's I what i believe listen to that like crank yanker style it was yeah, a lot of because like, we it was a lot about- of it wasn't it a lot of uh crank calls too crank calls that? we had this conversation about cky when i was there yeah like oh, are we watched cky awful. i have no idea how we managed to get that material i it was so, it was so bad it was like it was like the cringiest. It's like some of the cringiest YouTube now. It's hilarious. Mm. It's just like cuss word, cuss word, cuss word, jump cut, jump cut, jump cut, jump cut, and it's not even like like I was like this isn't even like hilarious. I mean, it was funny back in the day, but nowadays it's almost like looking at mm. something and you're like, wow, I guess everything started somewhere. But it really was almost like the beginning of an internet style. It is, but I'd like in the chat, someone say you fucking like to this day, guys. To this. This, uh, you know, in the early days, stuff gets programmed in your head when you're young and you get into something for the first time. Like to this day, when some, when I'm in the car and I hear like someone honking the horn either at me or I'm just straight in a honk, I, I immediately in my brain plays, oh, have another one, you fucking nuts. You're gonna <laughs> die, bitch. Like that's what I hear when I hear. <laughs> and if you said that, you'd look like a psychopath. <laughs> Oh, have another one. That's you probably get like arrested. Plays <laughs> in my head. So look at that, man. It's look even got like, that looks awesome. It's got little these these have these little four indentions here. It's per, like it's perfect for that. Oh my god, I need one of those stands. And like, yeah, it sits, it fits, like slips. It's got little indentions in there for the stand. Oh my god, that's so nice for having it on a table. Yeah, like just using it so, on a table and maybe playing a little game off to this, like a secondary little monitor. Yeah, let's see here. Let me see if I can put that That's down a little really bit. That's really nice. Can see that angle. There we go. So you get a nice angle there. On uh, now we'll go back to the side by side. So you get a nice angle here. Makes your makes your head look small or your PVM look huge. You know, it's all a matter of perspective, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now, if you could only do this with your penis, right? Yeah, I know. Like, you'd be paying. If on I that like PVM, lean, lean to this way, does my <laughs> does my, does my pecker look? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, baby, does this super small eight-inch PVM make my pecker look? Big? <laughs> I had to laugh. I was sitting there and uh, I saw some stupid thing on on Twitter about. Um, motivating motivating you to lose weight and it was it was a nurse and she was going 
you know, every 35 pounds of fat you lose, your dick gets one inch bigger. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, why aren't they saying that all over the TV set? <laughs> hey, baby. <laughs> That why is it that like the selling point for like a a, a targeted weight loss? <laughs> oh, dude. So, but that's a really cool. Looks high great. Heel. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Bakuku in the chat there. Uh, no, I don't think Steve. Steve, you didn't actually get to. You never got. Uh, found a way to fix up that FW nine hundred, did you? Nope, I have not really messed with it since. I think it's, I remember you uh, said you put in a couple of days into it, and then you were like, "Nah." Yeah, I it's been fully recapped. Really. I'm afraid to. I really, I need to hook up a. I haven't. I haven't hooked the tube tester up to it. I'm afraid it's got shorts in it. Um, mm. But that's what I need to do. Um, and then I, because I hooked the tube tester up to my other D24, which did have some shorts, and then I tried to like rejuvenate it, and it fried the tube. And I was like, "Dang it!" But it was it's bad right. anyway. But yeah, this this stand is great. I gotta like, uh, I need to get one of these. I could totally imagine on my kind of workbench here having that and like being a really nice test monitor. Or, right. Yeah. Just I mean, why it's the easiest thing, but it's so nice just to point it upwards and like looks sturdy as well. I don't understand why you know like here. He's got shorts on today. It must be good weather after that. Now, the five inches have that, right? So they have a built-in stand. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. The little kickstand there. True. So they have Well, maybe I'll, well, I'm going to sell one but to the Stockholm. The, the, the dude in Stockholm, I can keep one on my desk. Yeah, that's yeah nice. but the problem then is the eight inches don't, but they, got, they brought it back on the uh, BVMs that are the multi-format ones. The one, uh, oh, the, the I don't D, have a multi The D nine, yeah, that's the okay. one that, that's the one that Shanks always messing with. That he's got an HDMI card for now. Yeah, okay. So yeah, Shanks shows us all these crazy bo boards he's working on in this BVM. It's the D nine, the multi format D nine, and he's been, um, making just custom cards and what do you have i mean i don't even so, know yeah, what, what shank is. we get like messages at like 3 a.m your time and shank's like i just came up with this and he'll just send you a picture and so what he's doing he's getting input cards for a bvm and now typically traditionally an input card would be what well, maybe a composite input card s video input card vga input card right that's right. typically what the cards would be used for something to provide input but what he's doing is creating a whole bvm input card but like mounting a wii in it or mounting yeah, a whole that. game boy advance so it's like a it's like a wii in a bvm card and so you don't like you play and with controller ports on there and so the wii's output is basically directly piped into the bvm and he's kind of just got now this template for making all these different cards and just for no good reason he just loves making these new cards right yeah and it's like oh my gosh what you, i didn't even know you're still working on anything <laughs> like that he's just like oh yeah i got another card now you can just, just send hdmi right into the back of it no lag it'll just go 1080i to whatever set 420p or 480p i guess up to t so the fun stuff uh but I don't think that's anything that's going to be released. I think that's going to be more just like projects. He'll probably release the info on it. I don't think he's going to make those things. That's a problem. There's not like a huge, there wouldn't be a huge. No, he's doing it for the shits and giggles. Yeah, right. And he's for his own he research loves the challenge. Yeah. For his own research. So because um, I mean, he started with the Wii, I believe, because you know, Wii and the, the GameCube is his, his thing. That's right. Yeah, that's looking nice. Um, actually, coming from that conversation that we we were in uh, today, our Discord, the one with Ma Martin was asking, and this reminded me of this question again. Um, I think we've has anyone got Sega branded analog cables? So, no, does anyone no, no. Have, I would love to know. Is there? There's not a composite cable that's branded Sega, is there? So what? Is this Steve? The cable that came with the Sega with the Genesis was just like no label on it. 
Yeah, I don't remember ever seeing a Sega proprietary cable. I don't remember what the original looked like, but I know that I don't have any. It's not like the Nintendo. Right, that's got composite. Nintendo written on it. The multi out, yeah. Yeah, so it's that's always been the reason um, people have wanted the composite cables for the because you can only find shit shit ones. Mm. I wonder if Sega even made them. So there, there must have been a cable that came with the Genesis. Like I'm not yeah, even sure that's which what I one mean. I have came the, with and how good. I it, have you know, like I have the RF that came with my Genesis. Yeah, and that's a and that it, says Sega. Too. Yeah, I that, think that, that, that's Sega. Yes, I think that that was the only thing I remember was having RF. I don't actually remember. I think that that was probably the thing. I bet most of it was RF at the time, unless I don't remember that any of those included a composite video cable. Yeah, someone in the chat. Who's there? Uh, they advertise both a mono and stereo cable on the on oh, the Nomad. Yeah. That was a bit different. Yeah, did any Genesis consoles ever come with a composite cable? Yeah. Sega branded RF cable. Yeah, now you talk about it. Yes, I have the RF cables. And the niche the niche uh, corner case is that the French Genesis, because they were like RGB scar only by law in France, uh, they Sega had to make a special rgb cable for france and that does have sega uh it's not a sticker i believe it's actually in the mold um and okay. i have one of those um because that's because uh the way because the, the, if they wanted to sell the genesis console in france legally it had to have rgb scar like fucking french right like that was a legal <laughs> requirement because scar is like a french standard that then became european and then they pushed these things forward really uh strongly so oh, if okay. Sega wanted to produce it they had to produce a scott and and they didn't have that like they didn't have one of those so as much as i've understood now there's a lot of different variations but the ones that i've seen basically they stripped off the genesis board they strip off any of the uh composite circuitry like any of the stuff that would allow that they basically then do a factory bodge. So straight out of the VDP is coming RGB and S, and it's not getting attenuated or whatever you would call like shaped or whatever you want to say, like, uh, or amplified or no, no, nothing is happening to it. It's, it, it's being factory bodged straight from the VDP to the pin output. And then what Sega did is produce a cable that had this big ass box in the middle of it, like about the like at least the size of a packet of cigarettes like a bo a reasonable size box and then in that box was the circuitry needed to uh shape the signal correctly for rgb and that was because i guess they wanted to get that out like i guess i couldn't read this. i don't know it's very sega made a lot of really weird hardware decisions at that time but that's why the the french cable can only be used on a french system for that wow. reason that's very Whack. odd. Whack. Yeah, so shout out to Time for sending in the part number, sixteen MK 1634 and 1635. Those do bring back like the mono and stereo cables, but I'm still not seeing anything. The only thing that says if, that like you find with an actual Sega logo is, again, this RF unit, the 1632. Yeah, we've got plenty of those. Face. those yeah. That's not... That's I can't find anything that actually like is embroidered with Sega branding yet. At least not yet. No. Whoop. Uh, Whoops. Stereo. Sega Retro. Sega Video Cable. The problem is, is everything says. If you go to, a video. if you search for that part number, you go to the website Sega Retro, and then it's got some pictures here. Let's try and pull these up. Okay. Which doesn't work very correctly uh that's fine oh yeah i did pull that's yeah this is just like wikipedia wait here we go so there actually is packaging on well so the packaging is interesting because that says that they were after mostly aftermarket 
Yeah, let's see. Uh, here. I mean, I'm, I'm having a hard time getting this to expand, and I'll pull this over your head. But yeah, the does... Sega Retro website isn't working, but I found a. So there actually yeah. is. See, that's what I thought. Like you would have had to buy these probably separately in a little thing. And back right. then, so, it was yeah. like. I remember back then. I don't even know. I would have been like, ah, no, I just don't know if that's even gonna work. Give me the one I used to have, the sixteen thirty two, since I don't know anything about it. Yeah, I post. I think I can post links into the chat. Yes, I can. If you go to this page, okay. it shows it's still blurry, but you can see that, and there's no place for branding on that, unless I right see. at the bit where it goes to the console, maybe would have some oh but. but i will tell you the reason i'll pull this over um this is different because it has one of those oh what are they called these guys ferrite cores you see it yes so most of the ones guys most of the ones that you see in uh in the stores will not have the ferrite core which is this hunk right here right mm -hmm. by the video output which is supposed to like be a noise eliminator that's the only difference actually uh, so who's it uh ronnie ronnie's in the chat uh he says ronnie do you remember does your one have the ferrite block thing on it because even on that page that we just linked the first two are clearly the packaging but if you scroll down just above the advertisement it that picture is definitely a generic cable that's, that's the, like that's the one, generic one that you find on, just like, pulled a generic Amazon. cable a picture of a generic cable for that one yeah, I was like, wonder. So it's very that? interesting that there's not even that many pictures of this on the internet at all. I know. So I thought I've always thought is there's no way like somebody can. That's why the best thing to do right now is to buy the retro frog cables. Oh, definitely. For that. Yeah, hundred percent on that. So. Um. So yeah, so you got. Uh, I think it. Uh, I have. I have some things I have to get done here today before the end of the day. So, yeah, you gotta go do okay. yeah unfortunately, I do. But uh, maybe we could stream some time. I'm home alone this weekend, so I don't know if you have anything going on this weekend. What do you got going uh, on? Yeah, unfortunately, I'll be out this weekend. Oh, okay. But, yeah, we got some time next week. Yeah, that's, cool, that's fine. Well, you have fun. You have a good time. Let's try to stay <laughs> warm. It's light a yeah, fire. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for joining and talking about... Oh, Ronnie says his one hasn't got ferrite on it. So very interesting. Some came with the ferrite beads, some did it. Interesting. Yeah. We'll keep getting bottle of this. Thanks, everyone, for joining, and we appreciate it. Just hit a like on this video before you leave. That would really help the algorithm and everything. Yeah, we forgot to ask for likes enough, but yeah, everybody, thank you so much for coming in and having a good Friday afternoon with us for about a little over an hour. Had some good, fun stories. And uh, we'll have to follow up. Let us know if you decide to do the uh, Steve's moisturizer method for your hands. <laughs> <laughs> so if you uh, didn't, if you didn't catch that, you didn't catch the beginning of the stream. You go back and watch it. Yeah, you don't All want to right. No. All right, everyone. Thank you very much for joining. We appreciate y'all being in the chat. Y'all have a good day now. Have a good weekend. See you next time, guys. All right. See.